Hi, my name is Karish. I'm representing on cooperation and multi-agent reinforcement learning. We'll be going over the multi-agent paradigm, followed by stochastic Markov games and queue learning, which are used in multi-agent learning. We'll then focus our attention to three specific algorithms which motivate collaboration in multi-agent learning. We will then address the problem of surprise minimization, which arises from stochastic dynamics. We discuss experiments focused by limitations and fusion. So what is multi-agent reinforcement learning? We basically deal with the problem of multiple agents in the environment but interact simultaneously. Agents can perform as a team or in selfish interests. The only essential component is that there are multiple agents at the same given time step. We focus our attention to cooperation, which is a hard problem in the case of centralized submits and decentralized control. This is essential because a single agent may not be able to achieve all of the complex tasks. Thus, we require multiple agents to act simultaneously. But how do multiple agents learn to collaborate at the same time? To study this, we focus our attention to stochastic Markov games, which is a tuple consisting of various entities where S is the state space of agents, AN is the action space for each agent, RN is a reward function for each agent, and is a set of all players. P is a state transition probability distribution which maps the current state to the next state, and gamma is a discount factor which we'll discuss in Q learning. These games are also known as general Markov games or GMGs as they are general frameworks for any kind of Markov processes in games corresponding to multi-agents. To focus on collaboration, we look at team Markov games or TMGs which are a compact tuple consisting of the same entities. However, the only difference lies in that a TMG has a combined strategy space for all agents and each agent observes the same reward. Thus, the game only requires one reward function. But the question arises that how can agents learn TMGs to maximize their payoffs? We study Q learning, which is probably one of the most famous algorithms in reinforcement learning. In Q learning, agents select a joint action A and optimize their policy distribution, which is a distribution over actions given the state using Q values. Q values are defined as long-term gains or expected rewards under this policy distribution given the state and action pairs. Note that we use gamma here which is a discounting term to motivate long horizon behaviors and collaboration. This is to make sure that the agents are not greedy with respect to short-sighted behavior. Each agent maintains its own Q values which forms the joint Q values for all agents. We now talk about the policies in Q learning. Each agent has its own policy and it is parameterized by parameters theta. The joint policy for all agents is optimal only when each individual policy is optimal, giving rise to the optimal Q values. This can also be interpreted as the Nash equilibrium of the team Markov game where each agent performs optimally and has no incentive to deviate. But how do we update these policies or these distributions in long horizon? We make use of temporal difference learning, which is a small trick where we update our Q values corresponding to consecutive time steps. So we set up a target Y, which is the expected Q value for next time steps and the actual Q values estimated by the agent are different, different from this. So this is a cost function or the objective to be minimized. And we can use these Q values by selecting some Boltzmann distribution and maximize over this probability. We use gradient descent generally for optimization. So now that we have a setup, we begin to answer the question of how can we effectively use temporal difference learning and Q learning in multi-agent settings. To answer these questions, we review the state of the art methods in multi-agent reinforcement learning. We improve collaboration and decentralized control at test time. Specifically, we look at three algorithms. Firstly, we look at independent Q learning in which each agent updates its own Q values. Then we look at variants, which factorize the Q values into centralized information. And then we finally look at Qmix, which presents nonlinear factorization and monotonic constraints 
on individual Q values for joint policy optimization. So let's begin by independent Q learning. This is a setup where each agent interacts in the environment independently and updates its own beliefs. Agents are part of a team, but they generally act in selfish interests. They just have to interact in the environment and need not cooperate necessarily. Independent queue learning faces a non-stationary problem wherein each agent environment is continuously changing with respect to other agents' actions. Secondly, lack of centralized information in independent queue learning does not lead global convergence as there is no cooperation between agents. Lastly, from an implementation point of view, independent queue learning is computationally expensive since each agent needs to update its belief consecutively. To address these problems in independent queue learning, we look at value decomposition networks, which factorize the queue values of each agent into a joint queue value. The assumption is that the joint queue value can be approximated as the summation over all queue values of agents. This is an additive factorization and leads to centralized information under the joint policy. VDNs have advantages in the fact that they centralize the information in the gradients, which motivates long-term collaboration, and they're computationally efficient since there is only one Q value to optimize. However, the linear factorization is only locally optimal. Secondly, it does not scale well in the number of agents. For instance, if you have multiple agents as we discussed in population games, then VDNs will not work very well because the, the Q values will tend to take up very large values and it might blow up the computer programs. To address these concerns, we look at QMix, which is a generalization of the VDN algorithm. QMix factorizes non-linear constraints and Q value estimates using a mixing function. This mixing can be any non-linear mapping between individual Q values to the joint Q values. Mixer, net, mixer connections enforce monotonicity constraints by extract, extracting decentralized policies. The only constraint which is to be satisfied is that the derivative of the Q value with respect to each individual Q value should be greater than or equal to zero. The QMix enforces these constraints by preserving a global argmax. This can be thought of as a pseudo argmax, which is quite similar to the pseudo gradient which we saw in lectures, except that the constraints are enforced manually. We incorporate this objective in the actual QMix cost function so that the agents can optimize this in the long run. QMix is definitely state of the art method in multi agent reinforcement learning as it consistently provides centralized information. The non linearity results in globally optimal solutions in most cases, and the method is scalable in number of agents. However, recent work shows that QMix argmax operation is not always correct when the projection space is quite large. Secondly, QMix is prone to high variance because of stochastic dynamics, which continue to be a problem. So how do we address these stochastic dynamics in multi-agent reinforcement learning? To answer this question, we study surprise minimization. Stochastic states arise from anonymous transitions which can be termed as surprise. We need to minimize surprise to minimize stochasticity and retrieve the best response corresponding to each agent. Estimating surprise is challenging due to the fast-paced dynamics. So to estimate a surprise, we need, we need some kind of an energy function which can formulate surprise for all agents. We define an energy operator which allows in the estimation of surprise. We make use of sigma, which is the standard deviation of state distributions and VA cert, which is a surprise value function. This is quite similar to the Q value function, except that instead of estimating the long-term reward, the surprise value function estimates the long-term surprise. The surprise value function assigns a value to each surprising state, which is further encoded by the energy operator. We validate the choice of an energy operator as it forms a contraction on the surprise value function. This allows us to formulate the objective by using a weighting scheme beta, which is the temperature parameter. We simply incorporate our method with the QMix objective and we, and we succinctly write it 
plus beta e where e is the energy ratio so this is an objective which is tractable and which allows us to optimize our q values in the long horizon finally a note on the surprise minimization in this objective that our objective serves as intrinsic motivation and reward regularization by the agent is penalized if it encounters a surprising state we use a temperature parameter to reduce noisy estimates and we further show that this designed loss converges to the optimal policy pi star which consists of a minimum surprise our final scheme can be visualized as follows we estimate surprise using an energy based function we minimize surprise in the environment by acting and avoiding surprise using states and then we update our beliefs using the cost function l theta now we would like to validate the suitability of our method and compare it to other methods and see whether surprise minimization really works in practical scenarios to do this we compare our iterative performance on the large scale starcraft 2 benchmark where agents are provided with combat scenarios and they need to cooperate in order to defeat their enemy experiments consist of homogeneous agents where teams are formed consisting of the same set of agents and results are averaged over 5 random runs for 2 million iteration steps we see that the surprise minimization scheme demonstrates suitability on four out of the six tasks the scheme is suitable with qmex and comparable to other methods furthermore we see that the minimization of td error suitably can be carried out using our method and aligns well with other state of the art methods in literature as well i would like to point out that the initial rise in error is due to exploration because we do not have access to the straight distribution and we need to approximate distribution succinctly we manually force the agents to explore the environment so that they can gain sufficient information about its components another notable finding is that collaboration based agents do better in comparison to independent queue learning and proving that collaboration is essential for achieving complex tasks secondly high variance in iql estimates provide them for optimizing their cost concurrently and obtaining conversions at test time to further understand surprise minimization we vary the temperature parameter and see as to how our agent does in comparison to different values and we see that a lower value of surprise is suitable we see that surprise is heavily dependent on the temperature parameter making it useful for the qmex objective we can further visualize these behaviors in agents form where we see in the first case the agents collaborate together and fire at the enemy in a definite formation in the second case agents takes turn to fire while the other one revives his health in the last case agents have no choice but to sacrifice their lives to win the game to summarize partial observability in tmgs is a hindrance and we require cooperation to facilitate improved performance the requirement of surprise robust schemes is essential to tackle stochastic dynamics which may hinder state of the art methods such as qmex to perform well we provide theoretical and empirical evaluation of these methods and so that suitability of energy based scheme is appropriate in multi agent reinforcement learning while our approach does well it does not improve performance gains in the case of large number of agents such as so many bailings which has 27 agents this can be further improved by making use of other scalable techniques or other optimization methods such as projected gradients which we leave for future work another direction is to make sure that the surprise value function eliminates noisy estimates lastly we can also make use of robust behavior as a consequence of counterfactual states because the agents do not have a local communication protocol they may not be able to propagate information accurately we can address this using some other protocols or directed behavior which will motivate agents to collaborate in a more efficient manner thank you